A while ago, I got an email from Johannes Millen, a front-end developer who told me about an app he developed called Super Productivity. Now, before we get started, I should clarify that this video isn't sponsored. I haven't been paid to show or say anything in particular. I was pretty much just told, hey, here's an app I've developed, here are some of its features, let me know what you think. With that said, let's get into the video. Super Productivity is a FOSS to-do list and time tracking application under the MIT license. It's available for Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and Android. There's no native iOS app, at least not at the time of recording, but you can run it in your browser by visiting app.superproductivity.com. If you're on Linux, it's available as a snap, app image, deb, or RPM file. I wasn't too sure what to expect from the app, so I figured I'd just install it and see what happens. Upon opening, you're taken through a tutorial that shows you how to use the app. And my first impressions were the app looks very nice. It has quite a few useful features, which I'll get into in a minute, but for the most part, it's a simple application that doesn't include a bunch of fluff, which I like because sometimes it's just better to keep things simple. You can create new projects and inside a project, you can add tasks. And just as I was writing the script, I realized you can add tasks inside of tasks called subtasks. Maybe you create a project called school, create tasks for certain subjects, and create subtasks for certain things you want to revise. The first feature worth mentioning is the Pomodoro timer. The Pomodoro technique is where you switch between working and having a short break in regular intervals. Normally it's 25 minutes of work followed by a 5 minute break. After a certain amount of breaks you're rewarded with longer breaks, say 20 minutes, and you can adjust this to your liking. There are many Pomodoro timers on YouTube, but it's nice to have one integrated in the app, so you can keep a record of whether you're sticking to the timer on certain tasks. That leads me on to the second feature I really like, which is scheduling. You can set a date and time for certain tasks, and you can set a time for when you want to start and stop working during the day. By default, it's set to 9 to 5 because that's the standard if you work in an office, but if you're self-employed or just have a different schedule, you can adjust that. You can even include a lunch time. This can be very useful because it's easy to get carried away, work longer than you're scheduled to, and then become really tired and fatigued. You can also enable counters for coffee breaks and even a stretching timer. And the third feature is privacy and integration. Unlike some of its competitors, you don't need to create an account and you don't need an internet connection unless you're using the web app. However, you can run it as a Docker image. The app also integrates with other services like Jira, GitHub, and your calendars. You can also import and export backups if you want to move your projects and lists to another device or even synchronize it with Dropbox. I do have some minor criticisms, but it's mostly just personal preference. For instance, it would be handy if you could set working hours by the day of the week. I know some companies have a schedule where you finish an hour early on Friday. I've also noticed some problems with localization and translation. If you choose a language other than English, in some areas the days and months are in the local language, and in other areas they're in English. But overall, I think it's a really solid piece of software, and I'll have the link to the website in the description. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, Cheerio.